Have you ever been in clinicals and watched a nurse print off an EKG strip, glance at it, and then run into the room to check on a patient? Do you want to be that nurse that can quickly detect a heart block on a strip and take action? Hi guys, my name is Marie and I'm a nurse educator here at NRSNG. I've been a nurse for over a decade as a telemetry and a medical surgical nurse. And today I'm going to give you some quick tips to identify first, second degree type 1, second degree type 2, and third degree heart blocks. All right, before we get started, you guys all know that as a nurse, you have to know normal in order to recognize a heart block. First, we're going to take a look at this normal sinus rhythm on a six second EKG strip. And we're just going to break it down real quick. It's probably review, so we'll go quickly. As you can see, there is a P wave, which is that tiny little dip right before the QRS complex. And there's one P wave for every QRS in the strip. And then following is the T wave after the big spike of the QRS. So each tiny little box represents 0.04 seconds. And then together, the big boxes represent 0.2 seconds. The QRS complex needs to be less than 0.12 seconds in order to be normal, which it is on the strip. And then the PR interval is less than 0.2. That is the distance between the P wave and the QRS complex. If you count out the QRS complexes, you get nine in the strip. And so that means you multiply it by 10 to get the rate, which is 90 beats per minute. This is a regular rate, which means that each QRS complex is the same distance from the next one and it's a normal finding. So this is a normal sinus rhythm strip. Keep that in mind as we go through these heart blocks. Okay, there are five steps to follow in order to determine whether or not your patient's strip is showing a heart block. Number one, we wanna know if there's P waves present and how many. So the P wave is the atria contracting and it's the little bump right before the QRS complex. Number two, are the P waves regular? So if you just take a caliper or a piece of paper and mark between two P waves, does it march out to be the same from one P wave to the next all along the rhythm strip? Number three, are the QRS complexes present and how many are there? This determines the ventricular rate if you count the number of QRS complexes, which is the big spike in one six second strip. Step number four, are the QRS complexes regular? And then number five, we're going to measure the PR interval, which is the distance between the P wave and the QRS complex. And we're also going to measure the QRS width. So following those five steps is going to give us the information that we need to figure out whether or not our patient is in a heart block and what type of heart block they may be in. Before we move on to the specific blocks, I want to make sure you guys remember that the AV node is the gatekeeper. This is the node that's in between the atria and the ventricles, and this is where the beat is going to be slowed or not. So it's the gatekeeper that brings the impulse from the top of the heart down to the ventricles. Okay, let's go over first degree AV blocks. In a first degree AV block, the big thing to remember is that the PR interval is long. That is the only difference between a first degree heart block and a normal sinus rhythm. If you remember, the PR interval normally is 0.2 seconds or less. So anything greater than 0.2 is going to give us that first degree AV block. A first degree AV block is not a bad thing. Highly trained athletes have these. Um, Many children have these. Um, they're actually pretty normal and they don't really cause any symptoms or signs. First degree AV blocks can be caused by drugs, some cardiac drugs that slow the electrical impulse conduction through the AV node. These include beta blockers, um, digoxin, and calcium channel blockers, to name a few. All right, let's move on to second degree heart blocks type 1, also known as a winky box. The big thing to remember with second degree type one heart blocks is that there's a cycle of lengthening of the PR interval. So the cycle starts normal and then it increases with each beat until it actually drops a QRS complex. So then you go a whole um, rotation with no QRS and there's just that P wave. When I was in school, we would say marching out until it drops, then you have a winky box. The problem is it's hard to remember that winky bot goes with second degree AV block type one. But if you remember second degree AV block type one is a cycle of lengthening of the PR interval, you'll be good. 
So in the second degree AV block type one, the P waves are irregular as they are marching out over time. And you know, if you try to mark them out, they're not gonna line up, but the QRS complexes are regular until the beat is dropped. Okay, it's time to move on to second degree AV block type two. So in the second degree type two heart block, you have regular P waves, but irregular QRS complexes. There is no cycle and there is no pattern. It's just dropped QRSs, which makes the QRS waves irregular. But you will be able to march out the P waves in a line, but the QRS complexes will not march out. You will have a missed beat in there. A person in second degree heart block type two is going to have symptoms usually. So these symptoms range from fainting and dizziness to shortness of breath and even chest pain. When a patient is in a second degree heart block type two, they can easily progress into a third degree AV heart block. This is the heart block that gets us the most concerned. So we need to be very diligent with this type of heart block and begin medical intervention right away. So in a third degree AV heart block, both the P waves and the QRS complexes are regular. They are beating independently of each other, however. So you can look at a heart strip and see a bunch of P waves, but not very many QRS complexes because they are not matching up at all. The atria will contract, the ventricle will contract, but they're completely independent of one another. This requires immediate medical intervention. Here I show an EKG strip with a third degree AV heart block. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five P waves and only three QRS complexes. So this person has an atrial rate of 50 and a ventricular rate of only 30. 30 beats per minute is not good. Symptoms of a third degree heart block include syncope, confusion, dyspnea, chest pain, and even sudden death. So these patients need to be, this is a medical emergency and they need intervention right away. All right, let's recap. The thing to remember about a first degree heart block is that there's a long PR interval. Other than that, it looks like normal sinus rhythm. The thing to remember about a second degree heart block type one is that the P waves are irregular with a cycle of lengthening PR intervals that march out until it drops a QRS complex. The thing to remember about a second degree heart block type two is that the P waves are regular and the QRS complexes are irregular. You will see dropped beats in this as well, and it can easily progress to a third degree heart block. In a third degree heart block, you have regular P waves and regular QRS complexes, but they are beating independently of each other. So nothing is sinking in the heart. And this is a medical emergency. All right, guys, that's it. I hope this helps take the stress out of nursing school. If you would like to learn more about EKG heart blocks, head over to nrsng.com and sign up for a trial. Stop struggling through nursing school alone. We're here to help. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And as always, happy nursing.